Hello, today we are making simple forest scatter. Jacob, who is crafting with me, had some cool ideas, so let's see what happens. So we started by cutting out bases for our scatter pieces. First we drew out a few shapes from the board. For the basing, cardboard and cardstock works as well. Deciding not to go overboard with this project, we made only six pieces. Alright, using some twigs next, we made the trees. These are just little twigs that I gathered from the forest. We cut these into better shapes and then added branches and volume with the hot glue. Don't worry about the ugliness so far, we will cover these with textures later. This may look like peasant level crafting, but it will also probably be that. We messed around with the hot glue and created a few beautiful trees. As you can see, the hot glue strengthens the structures quite well. We glued on the trees after planning where to place our spider eggs, cave entrance and more. Trees aside, next Jacob applied some wood filler to one base, placed some bark pieces and then figured out how to build his little cave. This is pine bark we're using. The bark was cut to suitable pieces as shown. Then we glued them together into a cute little cave entrance. Ok, here it is. Not good enough yet. We added more bark bits to make it better. The bark of the cave entrance will later be painted as a rock and we'll add more of the filler as ground. To cover the bases in such a way that we get an uneven natural ground, we applied plenty of the wood filler. Here the rocks and tree trunks will look as if submerged into the ground, which is good. The filler we used is quite thick, so it is best to water it down a bit. Good, on a few bases, including this one, we placed fallen logs resting on some stones. We just stuck them into the wood filler, they should stay there. We applied the filler on the other bases as well. On the larger flat surfaces, it is good to glue on any random bits under to make the ground more uneven. Here around the cave entrance we applied lots of filler, so it looks more like a cave entrance. While the filler was still soft, we placed some roots around the bases of a few trees. These roots were just picked up from the forest. The roots will be only slightly visible, under the flocking. We put the pieces aside and I thought these could also be used as peasant level winter scatter terrain. They don't need to be fully dry before the next step. We will use repurposed coffee grinds as earthy textures. We applied slightly diluted PVA glue on the bases, covering most spots. Then sprinkled on the coffee grinds. This is looking extra messy only because we tried to get good shots in a hurry while the battery was running out. After a while we painted everything with a black base coat. A slightly diluted paint is good for this. The next day we painted the bases with brown. Here you can see some unpainted white spots that we noticed. The crappy base coat is no problem though, the brown covers well. On the trees and fallen logs we applied this texture paint Jacob brought. The idea was to get textures on the hot glue. And the trees should look good with this, or so he says. Alright, the stone surfaces were painted with dark sea blue. The paint here is diluted with water, so it kind of works like a wash. 
do note that the purpose is not to create blue stones. After additional layers of other paints, the stones will have blue undertones, better than just grey or black. It is also good to paint unevenly for a more natural look. Here, just a quick breeze to save some time. Next step is to dry brush the ground and stones. We painted with a grey first. Here I was convinced that the blue worked. We can see that base coats and such really do matter. Then we used a tan. This was applied more heavily on the ground and then used for overbrushing the trees. The trees are now too pale, but they will be darkened in the next step, where we work with washes. We used these washes and inks to create a good wash for the rocks. For these types of crafts, simple washes made from cheap craft paints also work well, but this will look a bit better. For the ground we made a brownish wash. These colors make an interesting green. We made sure to apply these unevenly, and on some places we also applied strong tone wash. Yeah, this seems to work quite well. We talked about how the previous wash barely made any noticeable difference, unlike this one. We continued by darkening the trees with a dark green wash. These will just be dead trees, so they are quite grey and colourless. We also dry brushed the topmost branches a bit lighter with this paint. We were a bit disappointed by the simple trees, but not after this dry brush. To finish off the stones, Jacob dry brushed gently with a very light grey. What is this real flocking? We mixed these flocks into a darker green flocking, then applied it using PVA glue. We applied it as patches, covering about half of the ground. All of this is looking quite good. Yeah, but I smell something. Yes, we shall compare dill with real flocking. Poor man's flocking versus army painter. One will win, but the other one will smell a bit better. Here you can see we also glued on some tufts. A dark forest needs spider eggs. We made these simple eggs from clay by shaping small pieces with rolling motions. While the clay dried, we also made these quick mushrooms from hot glue and toothpicks. Those damned mushrooms in every build. Then we glued on the eggs and mushrooms, wherever they fit well. We used PVA glue for this, although super glue would have been a much better choice. We also placed these two citadel skulls on here. Before we made the cobwebs, we painted. First we painted the mushrooms red, then made white dots. These mushrooms are the best and you can never go wrong with them. On the eggs and skulls we simply applied strong tone wash and then also dry brushed a bit with drake tooth. For the webs we used this material. None of us actually remember where we got this or what it is so please tell us if you know. This is how the webs are made. Take some of the torn material and wrap it around the trees and stones. Then be highly doubtful, will this ever work? At some point it should look quite good. But then you add diluted glue and it will look like a mess. Let's hope that the glue dries nicely. We also made some webs hanging down from the trees and then some on the eggs. Now it is just to wait and see. Not that bad. I always needed something like this to lay on the table. The eggs and mushrooms are a nice touch. That surely was worth the little effort. I'm not completely sure about the webbing, but it gets the job done. 
Thanks for watching. More simple crafts in these videos. If you enjoyed this one, do subscribe and like.